What's up YouTube and welcome to a new video. Now we all know it, used car prices are sky high. In the last few weeks I showed you the price development for various Porsches, Corvettes and Ferraris. And all of these markets saw a very large price increase, with exception of one. In last week's AMG GTR video I namely showed you that the values for used cars remained flat and that the new ones depreciated roughly in line with the forecasted depreciation curve. And that got me thinking. The AMG GTR frequently appears at the top end of the depreciation leaderboard as the depreciation for these cars is very high. But is this development what we see in the AMG GTR market a one-off effect? Or is it so that other cars with extremely steep depreciation curves also showed a flat price development? This could namely mean that not all used cars are going up in price just the ones which already had a low depreciation rate to start with. And in this video we will find the answer to that. I namely investigated the price development for some of the other cars which rank at the top end of the leaderboard. That is the McLaren 720S, the 570S, the BMW i8 and the Aston Martin DB11. But before we look into that, let's first see where the markets are currently at and how they relate to each other. This graph over here has the model year on the horizontal axis and the price in US dollars on the vertical axis. This video namely covers the US car market. You can see that each car is represented by a bubble and that they have different colors. In green we have the 720S, in orange the 570S, in blue the DB11 and in red the i8. Now finally you need to know that for each model year and model type the median price points are indicated with the black axis. Now then let's have a look at what we have here. First we can see that these markets cover different price segments. At the bottom we have the BMW i8 which has a median price of $105,000 and this is also the largest market as there are 141 cars for sale. Now if you add $49,000 to your i8 budget you can also get yourself into a DB11. This market has a median price of $154,000 and I by the way only included the V12 and the AMR models. So the V8 models are not included. Now the median price of the DB11 is surprisingly close to the one of a 570S. That car namely has a median price of $183,000. Yet from new it is the DB11 which is way more expensive. Now at the top end of the graph we have the 720S which tends to cost around $334,000. Surprisingly though this is the second largest market as you can choose out of 123 cars. The 570S market is the smallest one. Now one thing what these markets all have in common is the large price difference between the newest and the oldest model year. Look for example at the DB11 market. The ones which are for sale in model year 2020 and 2021 cost around $270,000 while the ones from model year 2017 tend to cost around $146,000. And that's almost half of the new price. The same relative price decrease we can see in the BMW i8 market. 2019 cars tend to cost around $120,000 while this is $70,000 for 2014 cars. And when it comes to newer cars, this price difference between the model years is an important predictor of the actual depreciation rate. I by the way forgot to mention that all of the models which you see in the graph here are also covered with a separate depreciation analysis on my channel. So check those out if you want to know more about a specific model. I'll put a link to those videos down below in the video description. All right, but now then. How much did the prices of these cars change during last year? Did they see a price increase like the rest of the used car market? Or did prices behave more like the ones in the AMG GTR market? Where they were more or less flat for the used cars and where the new cars still saw a very large price decrease. Let's have a look. This graph over here has now the date on the horizontal axis and the price still on the vertical axis. So we are looking at the price development over time. And look at that, there were some extreme price movements in the last year and not all in the same direction. 720S values remained more or less flat after they saw an increase, while DB11 values plummeted with $106,000 or 41%. 570S saw an increase of around $13,000 or 8% while BMW i8s increased with $35,000 over the last two years. So if we just look at this graph, it might seem so that only the DB11s decreased in price and that all of the other cars increased in price in line with the market trend. However, 
These are merely the developments of the median prices in the market and therefore provide limited information on what is driving the price change. The DB11 for example also saw a large decrease in the price variation. We will start with the 720S and then work our way down. If we make this a bit bigger then we can see that prices were relatively stable over 2020 and that they came down with $15,000 or 4% in 2021. Yet this graph is a bit misleading. There's namely a very large price difference between the coops and the spiders. So let's identify that one. Here we can see now that the spiders decreased steadily with $10,000 in the last half year of 2020 and then with around $16,000 in the first half of 2021. We can also see that the coop market developed rather chaotic. In the second half of 2020, it saw an increase of $100,000, while it saw a decrease of $65,000 in the first half of 2021. I have a separate video fully dedicated to this first price increase, and the link to that video will be appearing right over here. So check that out if you want to know more about that. We will now continue to analyze this market from a more abstract level. After all, there must be some factor which can explain this big price decrease over here. Let's have a look at the price development for each model year and for each mileage bucket. And we start with the spiders. Now it is key here to distinguish between the new and the used cars. If we split the spider market by this, then we can see that new cars have seen slight decreases over time and that this was causing the values to drop on a more aggregate level. However, these are not real price decreases. It's more likely that they are the result of fluctuations in spec levels. The used cars followed the market trend and increased with around $4,000 in the last part of 2021 and increased with $15,000 in the first part of 2021. And that's a very large increase. Moreover, we can also see that the price variation decreased significantly. And what makes this increase even more special is that the median mileage also increased between these two time periods. And this of course means that you not only need to pay now more for a car, but you also get a car with a higher mileage in return. Now I did some digging into this, and when you look at the depreciation per thousand miles curves, then you can see clearly that the market increased for each mileage bucket. This price increase what you see is then also statistically confirmed. And that means that it is unlikely to be the result of chance. So what about the coupe market? The price development there is rather chaotic as we just saw. The price dynamics are then also not the same as in the spider market. You see, if we split the coupe by the used and the new cars, we can see that both showed this strange behavior. It was a bit difficult to find out what exactly happened here, and it took me a moment to find the right graph to explain this to you. But I think that this one should do the trick. This graph namely shows the price development for the different mileage buckets, and it is only showing it for the used cars. Here you can clearly see that all used cars increased between May 2020 and January 2021. And this might be the result of the combination of the pandemic effect and the fact that 720 assets were perhaps discounted too much. Between January and now, prices came down a lot for the lower mileage cars. And the reason for this is that these cars saw the largest mileage increase. Moreover, they are still on the steepest part of the depreciation per thousand miles curves, which makes them very sensitive to these type of increases. Higher mileage cars continue to go up. I would then also say that the price drop which we saw on an aggregate level at the beginning is not so much the result of a fluctuation in the values. Rather, it is the result of a group of cars which saw a healthy mileage increase. So after all of those numbers and graphs, what is then the conclusion for the 720S market? Well, I think that the value development is quite good. Spider value saw a clear uptake during last year and also the coupe saw a clear value increase. However, for the coupes, we saw that value started to flatten in the last six months. Hence, the 720S market follows the development in the used car market quite well. Let's have a look now at the DB11 market and figure out if the same is going on there. In that market, we namely saw a very large price drop of 50%. But could it be so that, just as in the 720S market and AMG GTR market, the used cars over there actually went up in value and followed the market trend? Let's have a look at that, but before we do so, if you like this video, please support the channel by smashing that like button. Thanks. So, the DB11 market. Just as in the 720S market, 
the movements of the median prices provide a misleading view of what actually happened. In the DB11 market, the market composition changed significantly and many DB11s went actually up in value. And that can be perfectly illustrated with this graph right over here. You are looking now at the raw data with the model year on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. Market supply remained more or less constant as there are 97 cars for sale today, while there were 103 cars for sale in June of 2020. However, the supply per model year changed drastically. We can see that supply decreased a lot for cars after model year 2018. There used to be 67 cars for sale versus 23 in today's market. Now contrary to this, supply for the older cars is much larger than in June 2020. We have 74 cars for sale here versus 36 in June. Hence, this means that the median market age increased and that as a result, the median price decreased. But what happened to the price at a more granular level? For the more recent cars, we have limited data. But you can see that the price drops over here can be very large. What you see here is then also the initial hit which you take on a brand new car. For the older cars, we can see that the median prices lay quite above the ones in June 2020. It is then also so that for the used cars, the median prices increased with $15,000 or 11%. And this price increase is statistically confirmed. However, when I looked into this increase by accounting for the mileages, and I can show this to you quickly, then I saw that the higher mileage cars increased more than the lower mileage cars. But this makes perfect sense, given the initial steep depreciation of the DB11. And with that, let's do a quick summary on the DB11 market. Also in this market, the aggregate market movement was a bit misleading. We saw that new cars which gathered their first miles came down in price, but that the used cars, and especially the ones with a slightly higher mileage went up in value. And this is in line with what we saw in the 720S market. But let's continue now with the 570S and the i8 market. The storylines over there are a bit more simple. If we go back to the overview graph, then we can see that the median prices in the 570S market went up with $13,000 or 8%. Yet for the Spider, the increase is way easier to spot than for the Coupe. Let me show this to you with the mileage to price relationship split by roof type. We have now on the left hand side the coupe market and on the right hand side the spider market. And you can see that in both graphs the orange line clearly lays above the blue one. So prices went up. For both markets the price increases then also statistically confirmed. Yet in the spider market values really soared. Spiders went up with $26,000 or 15% and coupes went up with $11,000 or 7%. And these are two very solid price increases. But in the spider market, you can even see that the previous market top became the new market bottom. And that's quite impressive. It's something which doesn't happen that often. Now, consequently, this also means that prices went up for all mileage categories. For the coupe market, however, the increase seems to be focused more around the slightly higher mileage cars than around the lower mileage cars. And with that in mind, let's move on to the i8 market. In this market, we can see an almost exponential increase at an aggregate level. Between October 2019 and October 2020, prices went up with $10,000 or 14%. After that, however, the increase really accelerated. And we can see that prices increased with $25,000 or 32%. And this price increase is just as large as what we saw a few weeks back in the 9 and 7 Carrera market. So is something strange going on here? Or does everyone just want an i8? Well, there are a few things to take into account here. First, you need to know that there is a very large price difference between the Spiders and the Coupes. Let me show you. Spiders actually came down with $44,000 or 26%, while Coupes increased with $14,000 or 20%. And all of this has to do with the age of the cars. The Spiders were only available from 2019 onwards, and this means that this big drop over here represents the initial depreciation hit. And this depreciation hit is so large because the depreciation is very high for BMW i8 in their first years. The coupe market, however, mainly consists out of cars from the first generation. So the ones between model year 2013 and 2017. And for these, I already identified in this video over here that they were on the rise. 
It is then also so that when we split this graph by generation, we can see that the price development doesn't change. The development looks exactly the same as the one for the coop versus the spiders. Hence, it are the first generation i8s which are pushing the prices up. And with that, let's wrap up and conclude. We started the video with the question, what happened with the car prices for the cars which sit at the top end of the depreciation leaderboard? Last week I already showed to you that the AMG GTR couldn't hide from its steep depreciation curve. Now however, we found that this doesn't go for all of the cars which rank high on the depreciation leaderboard. We saw that in many markets like the i8 and the DB11 market, new cars came down in price a lot. When cars are so new and have such a steep depreciation curve, it is difficult to avoid the value hit. Quite surprisingly though, we couldn't see this for the 570S Spider market. Now when it comes to the used cars, all markets, yes, even the DB11 market saw a value increase. Some even saw an increase which is more than what I typically see on the channel. Hence, based on this very limited sample of 5 cars, we can conclude that also cars which have a very steep depreciation from new can ride on the trend in used car prices. Yet, the new cars tend to be exempted from this. They tend to follow the very steep depreciation curve which belongs to that specific market. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now if you like this data driven way of analyzing car markets, but would have liked to see it for a different car, please let me know down in the comment section for which car you would like to see in analysis. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Also don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll get actually notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.